Welcome to our video, Japan and the World. The topic for this time is, Russia reacts to Trump's election win. We have no illusions I would like to focus on the commentary in Newsweek by Tom O'Connor, senior writer. Foreign Policy and Deputy Editor, National Security and Foreign Policy In the first official reaction to former President Donald Trump's election victory, Russia has declared the political shift a reflection of U.S. Voters' disillusionment with democratic policies and said Moscow would uphold its position on the war in Ukraine when dealing with the new leadership in Washington. Trump has been critical of the Ukraine strategy pursued by the administration of President Joe Biden and Vice President Kamala Harris, whom he defeated on Tuesday. Trump has threatened to cut off Washington's multi-billion dollar military aid to Kyiv and vowed to pursue a plan that would put a quick end to the war launched by Moscow in February 2022. Russian President Vladimir Putin, with whom Trump sought closer relations during his previous time in office, has welcomed these efforts. Though the Kremlin has sought to emphasize its neutrality in the U.S. election, with Trump set to take office in two months, the Russian Foreign Ministry recognized there would still be challenges ahead. We have no illusions about the president-elect, who is well known in Russia, or the new Congress. Where Republicans have reportedly won control, the Russian Foreign Ministry said in a statement published Tuesday and shared with Newsweek. The U.S. ruling political elite adheres to anti-Russia principles and the policy of containing Moscow. This line does not depend on changes in America's domestic political barometer, the statement said. No matter if it is Trump and his supporters, America above all or the Democrats focus on a rules-based world order. The ministry further asserted that Russia will interact with the new administration when it comes to the White House, firmly upholding Russia's national interests and working to achieve all the goals of the special military operation. Our conditions have not changed. And Washington is well aware of them. On the political level, the Russian foreign ministry argued that Trump's win and his return to the White House obviously reflect Americans' disappointment in the performance of the Biden administration in the election. Program of the Democratic Party formulated by Vice President Kamala Harris, who was hastily chosen to replace the incumbent president in the race. The ministry accused Democrats of launching an overpowering propaganda campaign against Trump with administrative resource and support from the liberal media. Yet, the former president, who relied on the experience of his previous presidency, highlighted issues that are of real interest to the electorate, namely, the economy and illegal migration. As a counterbalance to the White House's globalist course, in that situation, the ministry added, the ruling group was unable to use the chronically ill American democracy which is outdated and incompatible with the modern standards of direct, fair and transparent elections. To prevent Kamala Harris' defeat, in fact, we are witnessing confrontation between Democratic and Republican states and between the advocates of progressive and traditional values, the ministry said. It is possible that Donald Trump's return will fuel internal tensions and bitterness between the confronting camps. Putin has yet to publicly comment on Trump's victory. His spokesperson, Dmitry Peskov, addressed the silence on Wednesday, noting that we are talking about an election that took place in a country that is unfriendly to us and in a country that is involved in the conflict over Ukraine, according to the official TASS. Russian News Agency President Putin has repeatedly said that he is open to a constructive dialogue based on justice, equality, and mutual respect for each other's concerns. And President Putin remains committed to this position and has reiterated it multiple times, Peskov also said. But today, the U.S. administration holds a contrary position. Let's wait and see what happens in January. Russian Security Council Deputy Secretary Dmitry Medvedev, 
who previously served as president while Putin was prime minister from 2008 to 2012, expressed his thoughts on Telegram on Wednesday. He hinted at the advantages of having Trump in the White House, even if there was a furious bipartisan anti-Russian consensus on Capitol Hill. Trump has one quality that is useful for us, as a businessman to the core, he hates spending money on idiotic allies, stupid charity projects and voracious international organizations, he said. On the other side of the battlefield, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky was among the first world leaders to congratulate Trump despite the president-elect's skepticism over Washington's aid to Kyiv. I appreciate President Trump's commitment to the peace through strength approach in global affairs, Zelensky said. This is exactly the principle that can practically bring just peace in Ukraine closer. I am hopeful that we will put it into action together. We look forward to an era of a strong United States of America under President Trump's decisive leadership, he added. We rely on continued strong bipartisan support for Ukraine in the United States. Trump has yet to unveil his plans to put an end to the Russia-Ukraine war. Something he has claimed could be done within a single day. His running mate, Senator J.D. Vance, however, has suggested the proposal could include freezing the current lines of control and establishing a demilitarized zone between Russian and Ukrainian forces. Meanwhile, both Putin and Zelensky have offered opposing sets of demands to end the conflict. Putin has called for Ukraine to recognize his nation's control over four provinces, Donetsk, Kherson, Luhansk and Zaporizhia, that were annexed by Russia in an internationally disputed wartime referendum held in September 2022, as well as the Crimean Peninsula seized and annexed by Russia in a similar vote in March 2014. He has also demanded Kyiv declare neutrality, demilitarize and take other steps viewed by Zelensky and his international supporters, including Biden, as an effective surrender. Zelensky, on the other hand, has called for the unconditional of withdrawal of Russian troops from all Ukrainian territory. The prosecution of Russian personnel and officials, including Putin, who have been charged with war crimes and other measures dismissed by Moscow. The Ukrainian leader also partially unveiled a new, victory plan, that would involve a surge of Western military aid and a clear path toward NATO membership, among other steps. As Russian forces steadily advance on the battlefield after a long period of stalemate and contend with a Ukrainian counteroffensive on Russian soil, North Korea has also reportedly sent up to 10,000 troops to aid Moscow's war effort. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken condemned this development in the strongest terms in a joint statement Wednesday alongside his counterparts from the European Union. Germany, Italy, New Zealand, South Korea and the United Kingdom, calling it a dangerous expansion of the conflict, with serious consequences for European and Indo-Pacific peace and security. We reaffirm our unwavering commitment to support Ukraine as it defends its freedom, sovereignty, independence and territorial integrity, the statement said. We are working with our international partners for a coordinated response to this new development. That's all. Russia reacts to Trump's election win. We have no illusions from the commentary in Newsweek by Tom O'Connor, senior writer, foreign policy and deputy editor, national security and foreign policy.